It's an awful feeling to have your privacy invaded. The feeling of being followed everywhere that you go, watched in everything that you do. You don't know if you're ever really safe. The feeling that a stranger who is obsessed with you could approach you at any time will leave you on edge. Well, that is exactly what the following people had to deal with. Here are 10 creepy stories of obsessed stalkers. Number 10 is Arthur Richard Jackson. Teresa Saldana was a movie star from New York in the 1980s, but her fame brought with it some unwanted attention. She had a stalker who took his obsession with her to sinister depths. A drifter from Scotland by the name of Arthur Richard Jackson moved to the United States so that he could act out his greatest fantasy. After hiring a private investigator to find out some of Teresa's personal details, Jackson was given her mother's phone number. He called the mother pretending to be a director and was able to get his hands on Teresa's home address. Jackson then waited outside of Teresa's home and when she appeared he stabbed her 10 times with a hunting knife. Now luckily Teresa was saved by a bystander but her terror did not end there. Although Jackson spent the rest of his life in jail he continued to send Teresa letter after letter reminding her that one day he would be back to finish the job. Number 9 is Bassi Essen. Famous people are used to receiving fan mail, but while much of this mail is positive in nature, some of it can be dark, twisted, or even delusional. Beyonce Knowles was the victim of such obsessive mail as well as other forms of unwanted attention. The stalker's name was Bassie Essen, who believed that Beyonce herself had actually been killed years prior and then replaced with a look-alike to make record companies and managers money. Worse still, Essen believed that the look-alike had murdered the original Beyonce. And so, like many stalkers, he felt he was somehow being protective and was the hero of his own story. In 2009, Bassey met Beyonce at a function and tried to hand her scribbled rantings. He has since attempted to reach her several times and was later convicted of harassment in England. But perhaps most disturbingly is that he is now currently a free man, meaning that he's free to do whatever his twisted mind pleases. Number eight is Thomas Brodnicki. Thomas Brodnicki was obsessed with Selena Gomez and allegedly traveled to Los Angeles from Chicago three separate times in order to try to meet her. But Thomas's behavior was not that of an overly eager fan. He had a history of violence and severe mental illness, including previous stalking behavior and threatening to scratch people's eyes out with his bare hands. Brodnicki claimed at the time that he had been having nightly conversations with God. The topics of the discussions varied, but more often than not, he would discuss whether Thomas should kill Selena Gomez or not. When Thomas told a psychiatrist that he was thinking about it, the police were informed and a restraining order was given to keep Thomas Brodnicki away from Selena Gomez at all times. And although a restraining order is enough to keep most people away, for the mentally ill, it may not be enough. Number seven is Maria Marchesi. Maria Marchesi was so infatuated with Dr. Jan Falkowski that she fabricated a string of horrific allegations against him. The doctor had treated Maria's husband. That's when the obsession began. She got a hold of his cell phone and home numbers and began calling him, writing letters to his workplace and proclaiming her love for him. That's when Maria began sending death threats to the doctor's fiance. Even Dr. Falkowski's wedding had to be canceled because Maria threatened to burn it to the ground. Finally, after breaking into Falkowski's home, Maria's tactics worked and the doctor's fiance left him. In a twisted way, she then accused him of abuse in 2004. Maria even faked evidence of the abuse and was convincing enough for police to investigate, but eventually they proved Maria had manipulated the entire situation. Ultimately, she was jailed for nine years. 
Number six is Ming Sen Shui. Some stalker obsessions are fleeting, while others last many years. Ming Sen Shui's behavior falls into the latter category. He stalked a woman in Minnesota for more than 15 years. The woman in question, Mary Stauffer, was his ninth grade algebra teacher in 1965, who he continued to fantasize about long after he'd left school. After 15 years of planning his crime in 1980, he kidnapped Mary and her daughter and kept them captive in his house for over two months. There, he abused Mary and also murdered a young boy who responded to Mary's cries for help. Eventually, Mary escaped and Ming was arrested while at work. He was sentenced to 40 years in jail, and while in court, he managed to attack Mary with a knife, scarring her and then swearing that if he ever escaped, he would kill Mary and her daughter. Number five is Robert John Bardo. Rebecca Schaefer was a talented teenage actress in the 1980s. She had a great career ahead of her, but that and her life were both cut tragically short by an obsessed stalker. His name was Robert John Bardo, and he'd already began his stalking obsession with another woman, Samantha Smith. When Samantha died in a plane crash in 1985, Bardo switched his affections to Rebecca Schaefer. After trying to gain access to a set that she was working on, he grew mad with jealousy when he saw her in a love scene in a movie that she'd filmed. Furious, he found out where she lived and visited her apartment. At first, he knocked on the door and told Rebecca that he was a big fan, but he returned just an hour later armed with a gun. He shot Rebecca point blank in the chest she died instantly and Bardo was incarcerated for life. Number four is Eric Keane. Stephen King is one of the most successful authors of all time. He's built a career on terrifying his readers, but in 1991, a very real horror invaded his personal life. While King's wife Tabitha was alone in their home, a man entered the house uninvited. He was crazed stalker Eric Keene. Keene was carrying a bomb and threatened to blow up the entire house with Tabitha in it if she didn't cooperate with him. Tabitha managed to escape and call the police and Keene was arrested at the scene where it was discovered that the bomb that he was carrying was fake. As it turns out, Keene had been stalking King because he believed that the author had stolen his idea for the novel Misery and had ripped him off. Thankfully, Keene was a fantasist whose greatest work of fiction was the fake bomb in his trembling hands. Number three is Margaret Mary Ray. Margaret Mary Ray suffered from a condition known as erotomania. This condition makes sufferers believe that someone is infatuated with them. In this instance, that someone was talk show host David Letterman. In 1988, she went to Letterman's home and stole his Porsche, sitting her three-year-old son next to her in the car. When she was stopped by police, Margaret claimed that she was Letterman's wife and that her son was also his. After that incident, she reportedly broke into Letterman's home, claiming that she lived there. After serving 34 long months for stalking behavior, she switched her affections to astronaut Story Musgrave. She pretended to be a reporter to gain access to his home. Eventually, Margaret tragically ended her own life by laying down on a train track. Both Letterman and Musgrave expressed their deep sadness at her passing. Although, one can only imagine that they were deeply relieved. Number two is the Westfield Watcher. The Westfield Watcher is one of the creepiest stalkers of all time, and it's still ongoing. In June of 2014, a young couple bought a large house in Westfield, New Jersey. It was supposed to be their dream home, but soon became their nightmare. They began receiving letters which not only threatened them, but revealed the stalker's behavior. The stalker claimed to be watching them at all times through their windows, and even suggested that there was something horrific hidden in the walls 
of their new home. The stalker referred to himself as the Watcher and claimed that watching the house was a family tradition. He also wrote a letter that he was pleased a family had moved in and soon the Watcher would, and I quote, call the children to me. So far, the Watcher remains a sinister mystery. However, it may not be a mystery for much longer if he acts upon his obsessions. And number one is John Hinckley Jr. John Hinckley Jr. believed that actress Jodie Foster was in love with him, even though they had never met. The obsession began after watching one of Foster's films. The film in question was Taxi Driver, which focuses on a disturbed fantasist who plots to kill a presidential candidate. Hinckley became obsessed with getting Foster's attention and began sending her notes and stalking her. He carried out an assassination attempt in 1981 and shot President Ronald Reagan and one of his staff. While both survived, Reagan's assistant James Brady was permanently disabled. Hinckley hoped that his actions would impress Jodie Foster and make her love him. He was found insane and treated until 2016. As of today, Hinckley now lives at home with his 90-year-old mother with strict instructions to stay away from Foster as well as the Reagan family. Kind of makes you wonder if there's someone out there that might be a little too interested in you. The fact that someone could be watching everything you do is a very real possibility. Let's hope that that's not the case.